Glory to God. Hallelujah. We welcome every last one of you to Midday Glory. We begin every Wednesday giving high praise to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, because he is just so amazing. He has the power to do anything that he wants to do. Glory be to God. All power is in his hands. He created all things. His mercy and his grace is sufficient. Glory to God. He is the one that is in control of all things. Hallelujah. He is God. He is our strength. Glory to God. With God, we can press towards the mark of a high calling in Christ Jesus. With God, all things are possible. Glory to God. He is the most high God. He is just He is pure, hallelujah, and we exalt his holy and his righteous name. We worship him with extravagant worship. We bless his name at all times, and his praise will always be in our mouth. Glory to God. He is Jesus the Christ, hallelujah. He is the mighty, mighty God, oh, hallelujah. I bless his name on this day, a day that we have never, ever seen before. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I lift my voice and I give my God the highest praise, which is hallelujah, because he is worthy, worthy, worthy. Glory to God to be praised. From the rising of the sun and to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. I will extol him, glory to God. I will bless his name, glory to God. Every day I will bless him. I will praise his name forever, forever. Great is the Lord, and he is greatly, greatly to be praised. Glory be to God. Glory to God. I know that I can do absolutely nothing without him. I praise his wonderful name. I owe my God, my all glory be to God. He is a good God. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Glory be to God. We just want to take the time to thank every last one of you for listening near and far. We first and foremost want to give glory and honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for allowing midday glory to be birthed. The Lord is working. Hallelujah. We want to thank the Lord for our listeners right here in the United States of America, but we are so grateful to God that we found out that we have listeners all the way in India, all the way in Ghana and Morocco and Russia Federation and Czech Republic and in Portugal and in Spain and Mexico, Germany, and there are so many other countries that listen to midday glory, glory to God. We thank the Lord for every last one of you. Every last one of you are so important to us, and we appreciate the fact that you would listen to this ministry. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I personally praise God with all of my heart, my soul, my might for signs in me, Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon, to be the host for midday glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. And we are aware that everyone is not able to dial in while we are live on the broadcast. So we are so grateful to God for giving man wisdom to provide a way or a means, glory to God, that the message can still be heard later on. You can give us a call back on our call back line, which is 267-807-9608, and the code is 732-499-POUND. Or you can go on the website, Spreaker.com. It's spelled S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, and search for Reverend Dixon. Or you can go on iHeartRadio. It's all lowercase letters. It's iHeart.com, and search for Midday Glory slash Reverend Dixon. Glory be to God. We pray without ceasing, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. Glory to God. The word of God says that whatever ye ask, in prayer, believe it. Believe that you have received it, and it is yours. Hallelujah. Prayer is powerful. Glory to God. God answers our prayers in his own time. He is always right on time. We keep every one of you in our prayers, but we want you to know that if you have a specific prayer request that you desire midday glory to pray in agreement with you according to the word of God, please send that prayer request to middayglory at gmail.com. Glory to God. We will pray for you. We will pray for your family and anyone that is connected to you. It's what this ministry is all about. Prayer is important. Prayer is so very powerful, and prayer changes things. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so awesome. 
Glory to God. So we've been sharing for this past three weeks in this month, Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So last week we shared the meaning of the word righteousness in the scripture, and it means a condition that is acceptable to God, integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting, glory to God. Let God lead our moral compass. Let his word navigate our life's course. We have to seek God over the approval of man. Surrender to God and let him shape the infrastructure of our character. Seek God's way of doing things and let his word strengthen and direct our heart's path, glory to God. No matter what our titles are, no matter what our roles or positions may be, we need to let God build our pathway. We need to let God build our reputation, glory to God. Let God lead us behind the scenes and trust him, for he will place us before great men, glory be to God. So let's pause and ask ourselves, how do we know if we're truly seeking God's kingdom first? Where do we primarily spend our energy? Do we spend our time and money on goods and activities that's going to perish? Or do we spend our time and money in the service of the Lord, glory to God, the the results of which will be, which of which lies for on for eternity, glory to God. Believers who have learned to truly put God first may then just rest in this holy dynamic that all things shall be added unto us, glory to God. God has promised in his word to provide for his own supply in our every need. But, but see, the issue is God's ideal of what we need is often different from our ideal of what we need, and his timing will only occasionally meet our expectations. For example, we may see our need as riches or advancement, but perhaps God knows that what we truly need is a time of poverty, a time of loss or time of solitude. When this happens, we are in good company. So we used last week's examples from scripture um, where God loved both Job and Elijah, but he allowed Satan to absolutely pound Job with all with God's watchful eye, and he let Jezebel break the spirit of his own prophet, Elijah. In both cases, God allowed these trials with restoration and substance, glory to God. And then we said on last week that a growing number of false teachers, they are gathering followers under the message that God wants us to be rich. But that philosophy is not the counsel of the Bible, and it's certainly not the counsel of Matthew 6.33, which is not a formula for gaining wealth, glory to God. Matthew 6.33 is a description of how God works. Jesus taught that our focus should be away from the world. Its status and its lying act for pleasure or gain. Our focus, glory to God, should be placed upon the things of God's kingdom. When we seek him with our whole heart, glory to God, we will find him, glory to God, hallelujah. You see, being a believer is not about following a religion, but it's about knowing a person, Jesus, the Christ, glory to God. So today, our final discussion on is on Matthew 6, 33. So we want to share how do we seek the kingdom of God? What is the will of God? Are we accomplishing the will of God in our lives? How can we please God? And in Matthew 6, verses 21 through 34, it does not involve expectations of perfection, but rather intimate knowledge of the king himself. Verses, um, start, we're going to start reading at verse 21. It says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? True wisdom in verse 24, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What shall you drink or nor yet for your body? What shall you shall put on? Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Why, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for the remnant? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. 
And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe thee, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall ye eat? Or what shall we drink? Or with what, with what will, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take, take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the eve thereof. Glory to God. Jesus is the kingdom personified. Before we can answer how to seek first the kingdom of God, we must understand what the kingdom of God is. The kingdom was so important to Jesus that he mentioned it 126 times in the English Standard Version or translation of the gospel. He clearly wanted to get our attention, and he wanted to focus our gaze on the kingdom. The kingdom is not a palace. The kingdom of God in the Bible is simply God's redemptive rule and reign. The word kingdom points directly to God's kingship or his rule, action, and his sovereign governance over all created things. But in order to truly understand how to seek first the kingdom of God, we must know the king. Jesus is the king personified. Glory be to God. The kingdom of God came to us through the Son of God. God's redemptive rule and reign sent King Jesus as a ransom for many. We learned in the Bible that humanity is sinful by nature and by choice. We know Romans 3.23 tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We were created as a worshiping being to reflect God. However, when sin entered the world and stained our souls, our worship became swayed away from the Lord who deserted into the hands of worldly pleasure. As Jesus stated in Matthew 6.24, no man can serve two masters because he's going to either hate one and love the other or he's going to hold to one and he's going to despise the other. So in this instance, he is referring to money and God, but the principle stands true elsewhere. We are always worshiping, but the question is, what are we worshiping? One king must rule our hearts. The easiest way to find what master we are worshiping is by looking at our own heart. Matthew 6, 21 says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Whatever we spend the majority of our time, the majority of our effort, the majority of our breath and resources on is what we are ultimately worshiping. Therefore, we have to ask ourselves, is Jesus our master or is something else? Are we worshiping financial gain or security? Are we worshiping approval of people? Are we worshiping power and influence? Jesus is not satisfied with half-hearted worshipers, just as our hearts will never be satisfied worshiping anything other than Jesus Christ himself. We are called to seek first his reign. We are called to seek and be satisfied by the king, glory to God. So how do we seek and be satisfied by the king? The entire Bible is designed and devoted to telling the great story of Jesus and how his people can seek and be satisfied by him. Reading the word of God is the first and foremost way that we can seek the Lord's glory be to God. Glory be to God. And as we begin to close, we want to share three practical ways that we can be intentional to seek and be satisfied in King Jesus. So the first way is that we have to confess and repent of that other master. The Bible is very clear that we are to have one God. From beginning to the end is a command to rid ourselves of idols. If there is anything in our life that we are treasuring more than Christ himself, then that thing has become a master and it's an idol keeping us from being satisfied with the king, glory to God. And we find ourselves wrestling with the worship of creating things. We must look to Jesus' word in Matthew 4, 17. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, glory be to God. And then the second way that we can be intentional to seek and be satisfied in King Jesus is that we have to submit our emotions and submit our anxiety over to the Lord. Not only must we repent of the sin that so easily wells up in our hearts, but we must take our emotions to the Lord on a daily basis. Every 
single day. And in order to seek first the kingdom of God, we must make God the king of our emotions. Glory be to God. We must rule. He must rule and reign over them rather than allowing our emotions to reign and to rule and reign over our lives. Emotions are not sinful, but we're designed to point us back to our dependence on Christ Jesus. Glory to God. So as we wrestle through our emotions, we must bring our honest thoughts and confessions to the Lord and allow his word to speak truth over our feelings. This will lead us to be both satisfied in King Jesus and to seek him more and more as we daily support, submit our thoughts and our emotions to him through prayer. And then the last thing that we that we can be intentional to seek God and be satisfied with King Jesus is that faith forges a way to seek the kingdom and frees us from all anxiety. And Matthew, the verses 24 through 34, Jesus speaks directly to the heart of anxiety. He knows that anxiety is an emotion. However, he attacks that emotion with facts. He attacks it with promises and truths about who God is. God is sovereign over creation, glory to God. He feeds the birds. He feeds the, 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 the dress. He dresses the lilies, and, and he takes special care of his created world. Jesus knows that pointing us back to God's promises will change our perspective and grant us freedom. And I was reading this article, and the, 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 the article says, do not be anxious about your life. And it says, and it, and it says that, that instead of being anxious, seek first God's kingdom, glory to God. In other words, when you think about your life, or you think about your food, or you think about the clothes, or your, your spouse, or your job, or your mission, don't fret about them. Instead, make God the king in that affair, and in that moment, and hand over the situation to his kindly power, and do his righteous will with the confidence that he will work for us, and that God, our God, glory to God, will meet all of our needs. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty good God who has everything that we need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord God, with humble hearts on this blessed day that you have made, Lord God. We are so grateful, Lord God, for your unconditional love, Lord God. We are so grateful for your power. We are so grateful, Lord God, for the God that you are in control. You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. We are so appreciative, oh God, of everything that you have done and are still doing in our lives, Lord God. We are so grateful, Lord God, for your grace. We are so grateful, Lord God, for your mercy, glory to God. We are so grateful, O oh Lord God, that you, almighty God, have no respect to a person. Your, your desire, almighty God, is that none of us should perish. Your desire, almighty God, is that we will worship you in spirit and in truth, casting all of our cares upon you, Lord God, and just resting in you, Lord God. Lord God, we want to put all of our trust in you, Lord God. We want to honor you, glory to God, for you are our strong tower. And we know that the righteous, almighty God, can run in and we are safe. You are the Lord, our God, hallelujah. We will worship you, almighty God, with gladness, hallelujah. We will shout with joy because you are our Lord. It is you who have made us, Lord God. We are, we are your people, glory to God. Lord God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, Lord God, and we enter into your courts with Praise, Lord God. Hallelujah. You are such an awesome, good God. Hallelujah. We will praise and magnify your name, Lord God. We lift your name on high for you are worthy, almighty God of all the glory. You are worthy, almighty God, of all the praise. Lord God, we thank you for your faithfulness towards us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you can look beyond our faults and see our needs. We thank you, almighty God, that we know that you are our Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, almighty God, for giving us a fresh start every morning, Lord God. We wake up every single morning with brand new mercies. Hallelujah. And we don't take it for granted, Lord God, that we wake up, but we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Almighty God, for giving us purpose. Thank you, Almighty God, Father God, for the beautiful world, oh God, that you created, Lord God. We see the world through spiritual eyes as you see the creation. We know, God, that you created it to be, Lord God. Thank you, Almighty God, for giving us the ability to worship you, the ability, Almighty God, to praise you, the ability, Almighty God, to pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us us peace, Father God, in all circumstances, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Thank you for giving us life, hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you for your daily bread, which is your word, the Bible, your word, almighty God, that instructs us, your word, almighty God, that directs and corrects and chastises us, oh, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord God, we seek your kingship, almighty God, with our whole heart. Thank you, almighty God, for your kingship is full of freedom, Lord God. 
Your kingship, oh God, is full of peace. Your kingship, almighty God, is full of joy that we can only get from you. Hallelujah. Lord God, we believe in you, Lord God. We will not need to be anxious about anything, Lord God, but casting all of our cares, almighty God, upon you. Lord God, we humble ourselves before your mighty throne. But we, we know, God, that you know all things. Hallelujah. You knew us, oh God, even before we was conceived in our mother's womb. Your, you had already planned out our lives, glory to God. We desire, almighty God, you are instructing for our lives. We desire, almighty God, to be servants of the most high God, doing your will, Lord God, helping the poor, helping the homeless, Lord God, providing food and shelter for those who will need it, Lord God, assisting in nursing homes, Lord God, giving an encouraging word to whomever may listen, God, teaching your words, Father God, to those who, who, who desire to know your word, glory be to God. Always praying for this world, Lord God. Always praying, Almighty God, for those who need salvation, Lord God. Always praying, Almighty God, for the sick. Always praying for the bereaved families of the God. Always praying, O oh God, for demonic spirits against the demonic spirits that try to influence, Father God, us, Lord God. We, Father God, stay dressed in our spiritual armor. For your, for your protection, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Always seeking you first in everything that we do, Father God. But we know that you are the Christ. You, We do bless and honor your holy name, God. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray and that we say amen, amen, and amen. Glory be to God. Thank you all for listening. God, continue to bless you real good. Bye-bye.